pretty shocking poll in the Wall Street Journal today that says that a majority of Americans, 56 percent, say that the United States is a racist society. Only 40 percent believe the opposite. So how did we get here? That's where we start tonight with Ben Shapiro, editor-in-chief of TheDailyWire.com and the author of the new book just out today, How to Destroy America in Three Easy Steps, which Ben thinks is quite possibly underway. Ben, good to see you. Thank you for being here tonight. And thanks for having me. So what's your reaction to that number when you see that 56 percent believe that America is an overall racist society, not that there is racism that exists in the country, but that the overall society is racist? I mean, it's shocking and devastating because it means one of two things. Either a majority of Americans believe that their family, friends and neighbors are actually racist because mm -hmm. American society is racist, or they believe that the institutions of American society are so deeply corrupt and systematically racist that they have to be raised to the ground. That, of course, is the argument of the folks over at the 1619 Project, which is that America was not founded in liberty and freedom. America was instead founded in slavery and bigotry. The only solution, if you believe that society at this moment in 2020 is systemically racist or inherently racist is complete destruction of the system. And this, of course, is the case that's overtly being made by people ranging from Robin DiAngelo to Ibram Kendi in their, quote unquote, quest against anti-racism. They say anti-racism amounts to tearing down the system from within. Yeah, I mean, you can see how these ideas take hold. Um, they're sort of hammered over and over. And I think in some ways people are indoctrinated beyond what, you know, the, the data may tell them or their own understanding of America might tell them. Um, you know, one of the things that we've seen is an increase in the acceptance of Black Lives Matter. Now, I always say, you know, there's a lot of different ways to look at Black Lives Matter. I mean, for, for some kids and, you know, have a T-shirt or a sign, they, they, they're looking for equality and unity in the country. But the roots of it, um, as we well know, the people who founded it are Marxists. So that's increasing. You've also got an increase in people who say that they think it's, it's acceptable and understandable for athletes to kneel for the national anthem. What do you think? You know, I wonder how much of this is just a, a certain amount of cultural pressure to cave to a particular mm -hmm. narrative pushed by the media. You're not going to get called out or canceled if you say that you believe America is systemically racist and that you are all in favor of people kneeling for the national anthem or for the American flag. You will get canceled if you, if you say the opposite, right? So the, the fact is that I, I don't know that a majority of Americans believe this. The fact that a majority of Americans believe they, they either have to say it or that they believe it overtly is obviously really bad for the future of the country. You cannot have a nation that is successful without any sort of shared philosophy, history, or culture. And what we are watching right now is the American philosophy being reduced to racism and bigotry. We're seeing the American culture reduced to reinstallation of hierarchies of power. And we're watching American history be reduced to a story of exploitation and brutality. How exactly are we supposed to live together in that society when we don't really share anything in common other than what? Hatred of the system? So that's what you talk about in, in your book, the difference between unionism, which is the basic fundamentals that the country was founded on, which I think, you know, the education system has failed us in many ways, that people don't have a clear understanding of what those things are um, in terms of the achievements, uh, you know, against Nazism, against communism, as you have talked about. And then the other side is disintegrationism, which is basically a rebellion that insists on tearing all of those structures down, right? Absolutely. I mean, the basic idea is that the American system, because it results in inequality, has to be torn down in favor of something new, that all inequalities can be attributed to the system, that all evils, all, all sins can be attributed to the system. If we just get rid of the system, then a new sort of human being will flourish. Well, we've seen that sort of utopianism before in other societies. It doesn't go particularly well. To tear down the most successful, free, prosperous, and in fact, tolerant country in the history of the world on behalf of a sort of utopian vision is not only bizarre at this point of time, it's, it's pretty terrifying and pretty terrible. And the fact that so many Americans have gone along to get along is really a tragedy. And as you're, you're right, it's a failure of our educational system. It's a failure of conservatives to get involved in the cultural fight rather than getting involved in the political fight. Republicans, it turns out, are very good at electing Republicans. They're not very good at winning cultural battles, and that's a huge problem. So, you know, I, I, I'm asking, you know, to win that battle, right, you really have to have leaders who articulate the difference between the two things that you're talking about in a clear way so that Americans and voters can say, I want to go that way or I want to go that way. And, you know, you look at these polls, um, President Trump's handling of race relations, 63 percent disapprove. So we're four months now from an election and both Biden and Trump will try to articulate a vision for America. Um, how do you think they're doing on that front? 
I mean, I think that Joe Biden is basically eliding the question. I think Joe Biden has run a very smart campaign where he doesn't give honest answers to a lot of questions, mm -hmm. but he will give answers that he thinks most Americans agree with. So when it comes to tearing down statues, he'll say, yes, get rid of the Confederate statues, but keep Columbus and keep Washington and keep Jefferson. Now, he's never been asked by anybody on the left why he would keep those folks, and I'd love to hear his answer. President Trump has defended the statues, but then he's also tweeted about Bubba Wallace five seconds later. <laughs> so that's not exactly <laughs> the best way of representing yeah. the unionist viewpoint. I do think that it is still a majority proposition, a vast majority proposition for Americans, that they believe in the basic principles of the Declaration of Independence, of natural rights, of liberty, of rights that pre-exist government, and a limited government instituted to protect those rights. I still think most Americans believe in equality before the law. Yeah. But I think that there's a very powerful push against those things. And unless you clearly and effectively explain why those things continue to be good and important and why the opposite is terrible, then you're going to lose the culture. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, I, just a quick answer to this, if you can. Do you think we're going to see a big increase in homeschooling um, post-COVID? Because I, I was never a big proponent of that idea. But the combination of what we're talking about, you know, how lacking certain things are be in being taught, and, you know, what we've been through with this virus and the way school looks when kids go back, if you're sitting in a box, you know, that's sitting on top of your table, it's not really um, a, a, an engaging experience. Do you think we're going to see a big climb in homeschooling? Absolutely. And not only that, yeah. I think the next step in the culture war is going to be an attempt by certain politicians to shut down homeschooling because they recognize mm. so many people are opting out of the system. I think you're right. Uh, ben, thank you very much. Great to have you here today. How to Destroy America in Three Easy Steps. Ben Shapiro, um, available today. Always great to see you.